This is Chicago. At the dawn of the 21st century, Chicago's media was dominated by a handful of major corporations. But a resistance movement arose to free Chicago's media from their clutches. One player in this movement is the Chicago Independent Media Center and its TV show, Chicago Independent Television. The Independent Media Center is a worldwide network of grassroots correspondents committed to using the tools of the media for promoting social and economic justice. You are watching this month's dispatch from the Chicago Independent Media Center. Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports by grassroots media workers produced free from corporate or commercial support or interest. I'm your host, Sanam Sister TV Amagashi. In this episode, we'll join with recent Chicago protests on a variety of issues including the ongoing civil war in Syria, a July 4th block party against the policies of Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, and a recent cannabis march. We'll also see a music video compilation of recent protests for LGBT rights. Stay with us. Chicago Independent Television is not brought to you by Coca-Cola, whose logo is stained red by the blood of murdered Colombian labor union organizers. Learn more at killercoke.org. Coke. The drink of the death squads. ...has deepened its involvement in the ongoing civil war in Syria, approving military aid in a controversial move. In this segment, we'll join a Chicago protest objecting to the move. Like I've said here in past occasions when we've been out here, 
that the Emanuel administration, which is very close to the Obama administration, is closing schools in poor black and Latino neighborhoods here. And how do they justify closing those schools? By racism. So when the, when the warmongers in Washington Pentagon come up to the American people and say, we need to intervene in Syria or Iraq or Libya based on some form of humanitarian reason, we need to stand up, stand together, and stand strong and call it what it is. It's a lie. The United States saw an opportunity to overthrow the Syrian government, and they wanted to do that. They tried to take advantage of that for one basic reason, and other speakers have already said it is that the United States wants to control the Middle East. It's not secondary or a second part of their plan for the warmongers in the Pentagon who are big buddies with the billionaires on the Wall Street, in Wall Street. Controlling the Middle East is, is of essential importance when it comes to the world markets, natural resources, and geostrategic positioning. It's not a coincidence that this keeps happening in the Middle East because for the, for the Pentagon and for Washington, the Middle East is their number one target. And their biggest problem with the Middle East, sisters and brothers, is not dictators they want to help overthrow for, out of some reason for justice. It's that, just like the Native Americans actually, there are people that actually live on the land over the resources, and those resources, by all just means, belong to the people who live there. Not to ExxonMobil, not to Unical, and not to Washington or, the, or Pentagon. So when we're out in the streets here struggling against the war on Syria, we're struggling first and foremost for the Syrian people. We're struggling for the people of the Middle East. But sisters and brothers, we're struggling for ourselves here too. To stop a lying, racist government from, from their attacks on us. The war on Syria is related to the war on the poor and people of color in the United States. And when we come out on the streets and we say the slogan, the most popular slogan here is money for jobs, not for war, well, that's a real good slogan because that's a slogan that can bring us together. That's a slogan that can unite us. But along with that, let's raise the banner of fighting racism here and abroad, sisters and brothers. Yeah. I'm Jerry Boyle of the National Lawyers Guild, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television. Oh, great rainbows and thunderstorms of our creators. Brainstorms far and wide yeah, across the world. Our pure water. Others are at harm. Please be a guide for the protectors of our waters and lands. May you break in parts of your canyon red, sunset orange, corn, to pollen yellow, seas, oceans, lakes of blue, and mountain purples for all peoples of each color across the world to defend our mother earth. She needs our help for she is our life and her water is our blood. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Chicago activists staged an Independence Day block party outside the home of Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel to protest his policies. In this segment, we'll join the party and hear from some participants. education is by overcrowding our classrooms we um, you know and then not giving them any sort of extracurricular activities like gym or art or music they have no break in the day the teachers have no break the kids are um, the kids are you know stuck in one classroom I think you know they need a well-rounded education it's not fair to them to have these large class sizes the per people funding is really to get us to have more kids in a classroom and I think it's putting a lot of stress on our teachers which is in turn going to hurt our children. When they're cutting our funding, 
not only do we have large class sizes, usually we're able to bring in reading specialists or math specialists that can come in and make the, the classroom sizes smaller. But now that takes that, their ability to do that away. So now we have 34 children in first grade, and usually we would have a breakout of five other children. So we bring the class down to 29, but we won't have that anymore. Uh, right now, uh, myself and my girlfriend are homeless. Uh, we have been uh, victimized through these uh, harsh and severe cuts uh, that have been given to government programs. She lost her voucher back in February. Okay, we got. Okay, we got. Um, I'm sorry, my first time, but uh, we we got a uh, voucher cut uh, back in uh, February. So uh, we were left homeless without any recourse with two minor children. So we decided to uh, occupy. So. Uh, we identified a bank owned house in uh, Rogers Park and we moved in and uh, we got volunteers to help clean out the place, had a little bit of water damage and uh, we made it livable. We invested over a thousand dollars, about fifteen hundred dollars in that and uh, we held that house for like 60 days. Unfortunately, we were forced out through a judicial auction. The company that bought it is one of the largest global players in real estate, Blackstone Group. Uh, they came in, locked us out, they uh, forcibly detained us and we were... Uh, uh, jailed on trespassing charges, not once but twice. Yeah, I know I said twice. We went back. The austerity budget means the loss of around 40 jobs in our building, from teachers to office staff to security guards. I'm also a parent of a public school student. My daughter's school will lose more than a million dollars next year. Once again, jobs lost, educational programs unsustainable. The story is repeated in hundreds of schools across the city, and we're the lucky ones because my daughter still has a school to attend next year, and I still have a job waiting for me at the end of the summer. When our unelected school board voted to close an unprecedented number of schools from the most disenfranchised neighborhoods in the city, they claimed a need for austerity. We simply can't afford these underutilized schools. When they slashed budgets across the district, they claimed it was unavoidable because of the severe budget deficit and then pointed the finger at teacher pensions. The mayor, the mayor and the school board actually want us to buy into the idea that the city is so financially insecure that the only solution is to make city workers and children pay. So here's the thing about austerity and education. It doesn't save money, and it doesn't improve education. But that doesn't mean that it's not working. In fact, Chicago's program of austerity and education is part of a nationwide trend. Discussions of budget deficit is just a distraction. These are the real five pillars of corporate education reform. One, you replace learning with testing. And then you move to two, you punish and destabilize public schools. So that leads to three, weakening unions, four, privatizing educations, and then the final pillar, you make billions of dollars in profit off the backs of our children. <laughs> Chicago poet Malcolm London sums it up beautifully in his poem, Training Ground. He wrote, I hear the education systems are failing, but I believe they are succeeding at what they're built to do. All right. At the Board of Ed meeting on June 26th, parent Victoria Griffo Benson spoke about the cost of austerity at her child's school, and she finished by telling the board, I don't buy what you're selling, nor do I have trust in this system that's supposedly all about the children. And in this era of austerity, none of us can afford to buy into a public school system that Chicago's trying to sell us. That's why we have a moral responsibility to keep fighting until we have taken back the power and regained control of our communities, our schools, and our children's futures. Supreme, and whenever I'm watching some sort of moving images on a screen, it's in the media for sure. Chicago Independent Television is not brought to you by Walmart. There's a reason we're the world's most profitable corporation. We pay our employees peanuts. Learn more at WalmartWatch.com. Walmart, always low wages. Always. Remember that uh, if you're out and out this weekend, many streets and highways will be closed. At McCormick Place, site of next week's NATO summit, this nation's largest convention center is becoming its most impregnable stronghold. Nearby storefronts are boarded up as if for a hurricane, but this storm is man-made. Mayor 1% Emanuel has issued an invitation to NATO's warmongers to invade Chicago. Security is high around the city, especially the downtown area. 
Do not let the city of Chicago intimidate you from exercising your First Amendment rights. The, the system is failing most of the people in some ways, and uh, people are in the streets. They're able to pay for this war machine all around the world by cutting back on every social program right here and keeping people more and more divided. Attention. This is the Chicago Police Department. You are engaging in unlawful conduct. If we were starting a new community, would this be why we create police? Holding in a democratic demonstration? What are we to them? What are we? I served this country honorably. I stood up to defend what I thought was a good idea, what I thought was my fellow Americans. And now they're going to put police on the streets to cage me in? This is a democracy. They answer to us. They answer to us. We will continue to play our full part in building a world that is safer and more secure. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Here's a segment on the 2013 Cannabis March to encourage better policies in Illinois regarding cannabis. So the march we just wrapped up, the march has been fantastic. We got at least 100 people out here. A great turnout on a beautiful day. We had some music, we had some speakers. We went and marched around and uh, everybody seemed to have a good time and an enjoyable day. It was very productive. So we're marching to uh, legalize cannabis, tax and regulate, allow adults to use cannabis responsibly in a legal manner. Um, but we're supporting uh, all of the various steps and changes to our laws to get us there, including uh, House Bill 1, the medical cannabis bill in Illinois, and decriminalization measures and, and other similar measures that have been introduced uh, at different levels at the state and local level throughout Illinois. We are taxpayers! We are all tag payers. Everything we buy, everything we do is tag. We are not criminals. We are not criminals. We are criminals.
multiple sclerosis, MR, MRSA, epilepsy, chronic pain, autism, and there's more. There is no evidence that proves that marijuana is physically addictive, unlike pain pills and other drugs which can cause severe physical withdrawal symptoms. Marijuana is listed as a Schedule I drug. Literally, this means it is illegal under all circumstances and it has no practical truth. It is that marijuana is medicinal. Prohibition is a lie and an offense to those of us who are terminally ill and whose very lives will be changed if not saved by the use of this medicinal herb. If something that has been medicinally used for over 5,000 years can give me even the slightest bit of relief and make my last days more livable there's something wrong with our laws. Take away my dignity, my freedom. Put me in jail for smoking a joint. I ask you as friends, as family members, as like-minded individuals, as Americans, think of people like me who are ill and could benefit from this no marijuana. Don't we deserve to live out the remainder of our good days, actually living and not dying? So you can get more involved in Illinois Normal and our general policy by visiting our website, IllinoisNormal.org. Uh, you can also, uh, if you want to support House Bill 1 or cannabis uh, policy in Illinois in particular, you can call your state senator for House Bill 1 or you can call your state rep uh, as well for uh, general uh, policy reform to, to show your support for those issues. But if you want to support House Bill 1, uh, calling your state senator now is the best thing you can do to help.